one train a day, four steam engines, and a staff of 44 serving the line. Let's reminisce and go back to the 2nd of September, 1955. It's six in the morning, and Station Master Walker, like the rest of Nelson, is still at home in bed. But down at the station, the last of the Glen Hope flyers is boosting clouds of steam up into the dark. A string of wooden trucks is marshaled at the platform. This is the only train of the day, and it's just about to go. Here comes Guard Sinclair. He's wearing a battered Stetson and swinging a kerosene lantern. What are we taking up, Gordon? Oh, I've got uh, groceries for different stores, beer for the Machapika Hotel, uh, manures for different farmers, milk, or Ben Hag. Must have his daily supply. Uh, carpet for one or two of the farmers up there, and furniture. Once again, engine WF-64 rumbles out of Nelson Station up the first Bishopdale incline with engine driver Harry Abrahams on the footplate. <laughs> I run your electric engines, I run your diesel engines, and I said, I run your steam engines, and I'm telling you now, the day's going to come when the old steam will come back again. And she's the finest machine of the lot of them. You get electric locomotive, you've only got to put a few pounds, a few uh, lo uh, tons over the load, what's the result? Up goes your bolts, off goes your overload relay, or you burn the hell out of your motors, you're done. Old steam engines here are running for 50 years, 60 years, and they still do as good a job as the day they were built. Down the Hope and onto the Buller, towards the end of the journey. A journey nearly always without incident. But Harry Abrahams remembers it best for the day he lost himself in the typical Hope saddle fog. Nearly lost his train, too. We started on the downhill grade after pulling up through the the mountains and we were running for Glen Hope and it's a very difficult thing when you get down in the valley there to be able to tell where you are and when we crossed the river I generally used to get my bearings from there and I said to Tom I said do you know where we are Tom he said no and I began to get a little bit uneasy you see because uh, I didn't exactly know where we were when, when you go down there with a blanket fog about it, uh, you, didn't, you couldn't tell where you was. It was pitch dark and the old light that we had, it didn't, it didn't show much. And you couldn't tell where you were. I got a little bit uneasy as I couldn't pick myself up. And so I was on the alert and all of a sudden round the corner we come right in view of Glen Oak lights. I said to Tom, by Joe, Tom, I said, we're heading for the ballast pit, I said. And we were going far too fast in that position for the brakes at my command. So I opened both leading and trailing sand, put on the air and whistled for brakes. But this time we were past the station. And just then, by the grace of God, I see uh, Baker, the station master, streaking for the hand brakes. And he got them down. Tom said to me, my mate, he said, uh, how far now, Caesar? I said, about 50 yards, Tom. Oh, well, he said, goodbye, Dolly, I must leave you. He said, better live a coward than die here, Tom, uh, Harry. He said, uh, I'll, I'll get out. So eventually we came to a stand. I took a few deep breaths and got down off the engine and looked around. The old 397's nose were just over the ballast pit. Pretty close call. Of course, we'll miss us as good as a mile. <laughs> After 80 years, Nelson had lost its train.